Okay, then. Uh, that didn't flow as well as Rubby. No, it didn't. No, no it didn't. It didn't. It tried. A valiant effort. Thank you. My, my ears hurt. This is the Fantasy Focus Baseball Podcast. Here are your hosts. Tristan Cockroft and Eric Carabell. Hi there, and welcome to the Fantasy Focus Baseball. It's Friday, July 11, 2014. It's our last show before the All-Star break. I am Eric Carabell, and that is Tristan H. Cockroft. Tristan, where is LeBron James going to sign? I hear he might be in the Yankees rotation by the end of the weekend, and I'm waiting on bated breath. What do you think is going to happen? Where would you rank him? Uh, uh, yep, yeah, that's what we got today. <laughs> no words uh, need to be said. Lots coming up on today's fine show. We'll hit the Twitter. We'll talk about more injuries, unfortunately. It was not a good day on Thursday uh, for players staying healthy. And we'll tell you what's going to happen next week. Here's the buzz. I think the biggest news is Cardinals catcher Yadier Molina uh, and Brandon Phillips, both with torn ligaments in their thumb. It appears that the Molina injury is a bit more serious, eight, out 8 to 12 weeks. Both are having surgery. But Phillips are saying maybe only 6 weeks. I don't think I'm keeping either. I think in a 10-team standard league, I'm moving on. And I, I wrote my blog today and, and made a list of my top 10 and available players at those positions. What say you? Well, you know what eight weeks would be. It would be effectively uh, the week after Labor Day, if I've done my math correctly. Yeah, it's September. Yeah, that, that means you're looking at, in the best-case scenario on the low end, three weeks of production from players who then are going to have to work back up to full speed and timing. I'm with you. I don't think you can keep either of them around, and I don't think you can <sighs> keep Tanaka around either. You know, the thing about Tanaka, I figured we'd get to that soon. They say it's going to be at least six weeks uh, with a partially torn ulnar collateral ligament. But doesn't, it does, I mean, we'd have to ask to find it for sure, but it seems to me that this ends up being Tommy John most of the time. Now, some guys pitch through a slightly torn UCL, including Adam Wainwright, who went, what, like five years, right? Um, but eventually it happens. Years. Okay, I mean, Luke Hochevar pitched through it. Eventually he needed it. I mean, eventually Tanaka is going to need this surgery, which tells me that in a dynasty league you want to move him. But he might still pitch the rest of the season, especially if they're in the race. If they're not in the race, I don't think he will. Someone did have this rehabbed and has not had a Tommy John surgery subsequently, and that is Irvin Santana. He had it in 2009. Now, okay, let's note these two examples. They're, they're rarities. They're big names, but they're rarities. There, there aren't many here. I actually asked Stefania that she, she said there weren't all that many who've done it, but it has been done. Problem is, Wainwright, limited to 12 starts out of a usual 28 when he was in the minors that year, didn't pitch well that season. Irvin Santana, 2009, had this, missed six weeks the beginning of the year, subsequently missed about three weeks mid-season, and had very bad numbers that season. So, I think even my hope for this year is that Tanaka, he comes back, he's not going to be his usual self. It's going to take some time to work back. And here's the other problem. In the worst case scenario, it doesn't work. He has Tommy John surgery and he's out for all of next year. That's going to damage his keeper prospects. And I've got a ranking coming up next week. I'll tell you, Tanaka's out of my ranks for redraft. And he's probably at least 100 spots lower in my keeper rankings. What are you doing next week? I, I actually don't even know. I know what I'm doing. I'll be in Minnesota for the All-Star Game and uh, I'm, I'm writing a piece on Monday to go with your rankings of ten guys that I disagree with, five that I disagree with on the positive and five on the negative. Uh, and most mm -hmm. of the other stuff I'm doing next week is all related to the All-Star Game. I'll have a piece about the Home Run Derby like I do every year, um, you, know, you know, final home run totals, and I'll be talking to prospects and players. But what are you, what are you doing? I've got four big pieces coming up next week. Okay, Monday we've got the, the rest of your rankings. The going forward will move from, uh, from Wednesday to Monday. On Tuesday I have my Keeper Top 250. This is the one that I do twice a year. This is the mid-season update. On Wednesday I have the Forecaster, which previews the 10-day week that we just talked about yesterday, uh, fresh out of the All-Star break. It's 10 days. It's not 3 and 7. It's a 10-day period in ESPN Leagues. And on Thursday I have what I call the All-2018 team. Each, each All-Star break I project... Who are going to be the fantasy leaderboard guys four years from now? Really? That's yeah. Fun. So forecaster that is comes the out. Most fun. Forecaster comes out Wednesday, but there's no games until Friday. That is correct. Okay. Uh, there will right. be an update as well. Don't worry. I mean, there, there might be some teams that don't announce the rotations, and it won't be complete at that point. I will do an update to get everybody in there. 
comprehensive coverage, and I'm sure there's going to be lots of other stuff from the rest of the staff about the rankings, and uh, it should be a really good week, I mean, to look ahead for the second half of the season. It's just a shame that so many injuries are clouding things up here. Um, who do you like at catcher? Uh, let's just give a couple names here of people that we would pick up. I mean, your top ten is in your rankings. My top ten at those positions at second and catcher are, are in my blog today, so we don't need to recite those. But name a catcher or two that's available in a lot of leagues that you would like to pick up. Mike Zanino is available in four out of every five ESPN leagues, and I still think the power is legit and that he's a better performer in batting average. If I'm going to go and pick up a guy who I think has a high ceiling for the second half, that's the one. I think he's had a good amount of time in the major leagues, probably has a good finish to the season. All right, that's fair enough. Um, you know, I'm surprised to learn that Derek Norris is still available in 68% of ESPN leagues. Uh, mm-hmm. He's been a top 10 catcher on our play writer this year, pretty much all year long. He's still in it. Uh, but he's not even close to 100% Owen. So I would add him. I mean, he's hitting for average. He doesn't play a ton, but that's okay. Uh, that, that To me, that's just fine. I would think that A.J. Przinsko will find work soon, maybe with St. Louis or John Buck. I don't think I'd want either one of them in that scenario. Would you? Not really. Uh, no. Wilson Ramos still available in a lot of leagues. Uh, Jan yep. Gomes. I'm not sure why Jan Gomes is still available. He's actually been better over the last month or so. So in a 10-team league, there actually is some catchers here. That you can get. Sure. Travis Darno. If you're in a multi catcher league, good luck. I mean, Robinson Torinos might already be owned in a multi catcher league. It's, uh, yeah, who dangerous. might not? Yeah, who not? Who not? Well, Wellington Castillo might be out there. And look, I mean, you can't expect big numbers from a guy like Wellington Castillo, but this is the reality you're looking at. If he's out there, I'd consider picking him up. He's got some untapped power. What about at second base? Uh, I actually was down on Phillips before the season. I think you were, too. He wasn't in my yep. top ten, and he wasn't putting up any numbers. I mean, he, he, he was one for four on stolen bases. Honestly, one for four. So, and, you know, he had seven home runs, but a, a second baseman ends up at 13 home runs and, and two steals, hitting, you know, 270 isn't great. Um, so who are the available second basemen that you would recommend at this point? Well, I mean, I'd say the obvious guy, and he's uh, kind of a must-add at this point, is Colton Wong. Colton Wong is available in more leagues than the aforementioned Mike Zanino, which I kind of find shocking. I think he's another one who could be lined up for a very good second half. One who's a little more underrated and probably out there in a a wider variety of leagues is Jordy Mercer. Jordy Mercer's another guy who's got a little bit of sleeper power potential. That's kind of the Castillo class of pickups uh, if you need someone. I like that pick. I do. Uh, I would say DJ LeMay, who can steal your base. Tommy LaStella can hit for batting average. And Scooter Jeanette's still out there in about half of ESPN leagues. And everything he's doing is legit. They don't play him against lefties, and it's working out. That's mm-hmm. the wave of the future, the platoon. The platoon works. You know, it really does work. Uh, sure. Deeper down, I don't see a whole lot else, though, so be careful. There. <laughs> well, well, Mark, well, Marcus Semien come back. We got a, we got a dream, <laughs> dream big for the final two months. <laughs> yes, we're all, we're all dreaming of that. Um, and then with Tanaka, uh, there's plenty of pitching depth, so we don't need to go through the availables there. Um, there's, there's so many guys out there. Um, but yeah, I mean, I, I want to move on from the injuries because it's just, it seems like well, that's all we end up talking about. But there, there are a couple. There's, there's one more aspect to this, and people are asking this. So let's get to the point about the impact on the teams. And people asked about Yadi or Molina. Does this impact the pitching staff? We've seen the numbers here. Uh, that, that the Cardinals ERA and, and, and obviously their production from catcher when Yadi or Molina is out is substantially uh, lower. I mean. It's a, it's a major impact. Now, granted, the sample is tiny. <laughs> Yadier Molina played almost every day the past three years, except for that one stint on the DL. But what do you think? Do you think this is going to impact the pitchers negatively? I don't know that I feel like that with Wainwright, but the rest of the staff, a guy like Carlos Martinez, this is a little bothersome to me. Not really. I mean, if I own Carlos Martinez, this doesn't change anything for me. If I was thinking of picking him up for a spot start this weekend, it wouldn't change anything for me. I mean, I, I think they can, you know... I, I don't think Tony Cruz is a bad defensive catcher. Obviously, no. Yadier Molina controls the running game, and everybody has a comfort level with him. But if I own Wainwright and Lynn, it doesn't make a difference. If I want to pick up Carlos Martinez or Joe Kelly for a spot start this weekend, probably doesn't make a difference. Shelby Miller, maybe maybe it'll help. I don't know what's wrong with Shelby Miller other than the command. So I no, I, I kind of don't think it matters. Um, I, I I think the change with that one, what, the reason I bring it up is this: is that people tend to think the Cardinals get pitching right. I don't think it's as fair to say that when Yachty is out. Maybe Yachty had a lot to do with that. That's it's. I think it's dangerous to just assume any Cardinals guy is going to give you immediate success. I think it's dangerous to assume that team's in trouble. I mean, from a, a general baseball standpoint. 
Pittsburgh had a great week, and they didn't need to win games to do it. The Brewers just got swept at home by a terrible Phillies team, a four-game series. The Cardinals lost a really important piece of their line, maybe their MVP. And Cincinnati lost numerous pieces. I mean, Votto might not play again. Brandon Phillips might not play till September. What's your take on Homer Bailey? Uh, you know, when he first left the game yesterday, I wasn't watching. I saw on Twitter a couple of people said, uh-oh, Homer Bailey with an arm injury. It wasn't. It was a, it was a knee. Uh, it doesn't appear too serious. But, mm-hmm. I mean, what do you, are, does, it, does this present a buy-low opportunity with Homer Bailey? You, you, you and I have been talking all year long. He's going to be fine, and he's been really fine over the past month. Some people that own him might want to get out. Yeah, I'm going to argue that this is the final by low opportunity you'll get on Homer Bailey. Uh, it, it, there, it was immediately said by the Reds that he's going to make his next start. Now, that's going to come after the All-Star break, so there was additional rest padded in here anyway. But, yeah, I, I think this is the best-case scenario. I was, I was kind of in a panic when I first saw this happen, and within hours they said he's going to make his next start. He's fine. So I, I think that's a positive. You know, Clayton Kershaw is going to win the play Raider. And yeah. he's he's unbelievable. Again, it was the Padres. Even Lincecum was beating the Padres. But uh, Clayton Kershaw, if you need pitching, I, I think you trade whatever it takes. Honestly, I mean, if you you would trade Mike Trout for Kershaw if you needed ERA and WHIP, because this guy's going to go like twenty and four with an ERA of one fifty, right? I don't see anything stopping him. There's very few good offensive teams in the National League. And well, he's on a streak here, which is unbelievable. I mean, the shutout streak finally ended, which is fine. Less pressure now. Actually, it's a good thing. This is going to be an amazing second half. Yeah, I mean, what, 41 innings he got to before Chase Edley takes some deep, incredible. In the rankings I just put out this week, and these will very, very likely, barring some weekend news changes, uh, stay the same. He was my number three player behind Trout and Cabrera, and I'm with you. If you're need to get, if you trying to get Car- Kershaw, you're probably going to need to trade Trout or Cabrera. You might see if you could try to get something else thrown back in in that deal. But really, he's an unquestioned guy, and the difference between today and the preseason is this. There was no injury question. He was on the DL, remember, to begin the year, and a guy who was maybe a 37 dollar player in auction leagues comparative to Trout and Cabrera dropped down to 32 or 33. If you did it today, he's at least a $37 player. It's it's apples and oranges. It depends on what your team need is. I have a very I have a deep league team in which Kershaw wouldn't help me. I'm already winning ERA whip and wins and and I'm doing well in strikeouts. So trading for him it makes no sense. I need steals. I picked up Sam Fold and I've had a great week so far. But so it depends what you need. But if like mm-hmm. you can get if you can get a Kershaw without spending a top ten player, even if you're spending three players in the top fifty, you got to do it. I mean, I don't know. First of all, I don't know why anybody with Kershaw would trade him. <laughs> but they should. Amazing. But if they are, if they are, go ahead, make that get, deal. It's a get mistake. In there. Absolutely. Now is he's a little bit better than Grady Sizemore. Um, I'm gonna <laughs> say. Hey. You, you know, right. you, you, you were right. You were right about that. And I'll have to tell you, with all the Phillies and Yankees talking about today, I, th- I just thought of the ultimate board bet for the second half. I can't wait. What is it? More wins in the second half, your Phillies or my Yankees? Oh, come on. Why, why would anybody take the Phillies there? That's, that's kind of ridiculous. I thought it was going to okay. be like, who's going to who's gonna be the best Phillies outfielder the rest of the way? <laughs> you know, or, <laughs> I mean... I, I will not be shocked if the Phillies win that board bet. Uh, I will on. not be shocked. You are, I will. That's ridiculous. That's like Jay wow. saying the Red Sox are the worst team in baseball every year, even when they win the World I, Series. There's no way that's going to happen. That's I a terrible team. What are you talking about? And the Phillies I'm are going to be a reverse bet then. Well, I'm not doing it. <laughs> but do you have any thoughts here, 30 second thoughts on, on how Sizemore's promotion affects other Phillies? Because. Don Brown's been awful. Ben Revere's dealing with an ankle and, and isn't very good. And I think more on the birds going to be traded maybe before our next show. What uh, What is your take on the Phillies' outfit? Is there any value to be had there? I don't think with him specifically. I mean, if you watched him play with the Red Sox, he was not an impressive player at all. I mean, he, he was a passable fourth or fifth outfielder at best, and I, I just don't think he fits anywhere with the Phillies. I think it's a mistake to really pick him up in NL only leagues. I'm, I'm kind of surprised you want to spend 30 seconds on Grady Sizemore. I don't. Let's move on. C.J. Wilson in the deal <laughs> for the Angels. Um, they, they he told the reporters the other day that he has no physical issues a, after another pounding. ERA of 10.26, uh, whip of 2.34 in his past four starts, and then he went on the deal for an ankle. I don't. I think he went on the deal for inflated ERA, and it happens from time to time. They can't figure out what's wrong with the guy. He's tired. They put him on the deal. They call it a sprained ankle. I think it's a good time to buy low on C.J. Wilson. He's always a guy who ends up with the numbers, 
Uh, whip is a little bit high, but always has the Ks. I think the Angels are a playoff team. Your thoughts on C.J. Wilson? I think it could be a buying opportunity. One thing that we mentioned all week on the show is that this is the perfect time to put the guy in the DL. So if he is on the DL for inflated ERA, which I think there's a good shot of it, they might have just said, take two to three weeks off, get back, and be right for the second half. Uh, C.J. Wilson has had some ups and downs in the past two seasons, and he has a lot of mileage on that arm since uh, going back to his Texas days when he switched over to starting. But not enough concerns for me that I wouldn't trade for him. I, th- I do think he belongs in the 30 to 40 range among starting pitchers, not better. But that's a buying opportunity. I, I always think about C.J. Wilson when someone says to me, why can't a guy go a full season when he's never been a starter or when he's you know, been a reliever? Like the Alfredo Simona argument, which I, mm-hmm. I, I sell on Alfredo Simona the Reds because... I don't buy his numbers. I, you know, his fit, an X fit versus his ERA, his low strikeout right. rate. But I don't, I don't right. say sell Simone because he can't pitch 200 innings. Because C.J. Wilson's a great example that he can. Wilson in 2009 was a relief pitcher through through 73 innings, and then he's thrown 200 innings every year since. There was no like, m- like kind of move him along period. He went at age 28 to age 29 of just being a 200 inning guy, and he's never been hurt, and he's not hurt now. So when the argument on Simone is sell, just make sure you're selling for the right reasons. I think Alfredo Simone's arm is capable of throwing 200 innings this year. I do. Well, one thing to point out here is that it's not so much that he can't do it. It's the odds that he does do it. There are examples, probably two for every one, for C.J. Wilson of guys who didn't successfully do it. Patrick Corbin stands out as one from last year who did tire down the stretch. So you're just playing the odds game here. But you're right. Simone could handle 200 innings. It's just the final 30 might not be pretty. Um, uh, briefly, uh, players that played on Thursday and what they did, the Chicago Cubs seem to be spinning their wheels on talk about Arizmendi Alcantara, who made his uh, Major League debut on Actually, Wednesday. Actually, we've discovered that his name is pronounced differently, and I had it wrong yesterday. What is it? And th- It's Arizmendi Alcantara. Okay, Arizmendi Alcantara. Uh, but he had four hits on Thursday, and that's all people really care about. He's better than Darwin Barney. We all, Everyone is. Uh, maybe not defensively, but he, he's an offensive prospect who has a little bit of pop, has some speed. Your thoughts here on Al- Alcantara? Is he going to stay up? Is he going to stay playing? Do you take a, take a shot in a 10-team league? Now, the Reds reporters are the ones who had this afterwards, so I'm not positive on this report. But they said that they were told that Alcantara is going to stay with the Cubs now rather than go back to the minors. I question where he's going to fill in here. Does he hold that job over Darwin Barty? Did perform well in this game. Had that nice triple late in the game. I do think he's worth an NL only add. Batting average a little bit at risk. This guy gives you stolen bases. I'm not ready to go all in on mixed leagues, but this is now the time to pick him up. Do you have any thoughts on Jake Smolinski, the Texas outfitter who had three hits and three RBI on Thursday? He's had a good week, but when I looked at his minor league numbers, it wasn't even worth writing about him, really. I mean, he doesn't have numbers. Uh, not a, not really a prospect type, to, but the opportunity is there, and we've seen other guys who may not be like this is like a Kevin Kiermeyer situation, maybe. I mean, not a guy who should put up big numbers, but Kiermeyer's been passable. Your mm-hmm. thoughts on Smol- yeah. Smolinski's 25, right-handed hitter, but you know, no great tools, never stole a lot of bases in the minors, but he can take a walk. Yes, he did walk a lot in the minors, regularly had 10% or better walk rates down there. Uh, of course, I, I do believe Pod might have comments on Smolinski that, uh, that that show that he's going to be a complete bust in the on-base category in the major leagues. <laughs> You've cursed him? I don't curse people. <laughs> I have no oh, curse. Yeah. You yeah. added him to your on-base uh, inefficient team, though. My team is not that inefficient in the on-base, my friend. Uh, I do believe it beat yours. Yeah, I do yeah. believe it'd be uh, Eric. Inefficient on base. Mine is inefficient on ace pitchers staying on the mound. Tanaka and Cliff Lee. Ugh. <laughs> I'm, I'm, I, while you guys are talking, I'm going through on my team to see if I have Molina, Tanaka, and Phillips. <laughs> I, I have Phillips in one place here. Uh, I don't think I would have Molina because I didn't draft catchers early, and I don't think I right. drafted Tanaka anywhere. So I think yeah, I did. I did on two teams. I have Phillips in labor. But it's not that big of a loss, actually. It wasn't doing anything. Uh, Phillips is the least devastating of those three. I mean, and I don't think it's really close. Yeah, well, yeah, I would agree with that. Uh, Wow, you're playing Tommy Intern this week. That's not going to go well. Uh, Jay, And I have no Tanaka start going against him either. That that ends it. (laughs) If you want to keep blaming injuries, you know... The great equalizer. You want me to go through the list of, no. of like, 14 I, guys on the DL? Because I'll I happily think, do it if you'd like. I think that's what people shouldn't do. 
Honestly, it happens. By it the happens. way, you know, you don't don't make excuses. This is, it, you know, we all have injuries. By the way, in, in our twenty-team team league, league, I am ninth in on-base percentage. My yeah, friend. this this on-base mm-hmm. thing of your of, of of this theme of the show is really blown out of proportion. I mean, yeah. You're, and look, he has a better record than either of us. You should trade he some does. steals, though. You you have a you have a lot of stolen. It seems like you probably do. Which do you have? It's running. You need to trade Jake Smolinski for somebody more useful. That'd be great. <laughs> and you, he doesn't have he he doesn't have D Gordon and he doesn't have uh-huh. Billy Hamilton. And for the season, he has 127 steals and no one else has more than 90. Wow, it's That's, Altuve. Well, Altuve, Ibar, Hayward, Upton, Escobar. He's on my bench right now. Anything else from Thursday you would like to discuss? Maybe your 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 giant underrating of J.D. Martinez, who continues to hit and is going to continue to hit? He's going to be on my list of guys I like more than you do on, the, on Monday. I can tell you that now. Where are you going to put him? I mean, he soared of my rankings this week. Oh, I'm certainly you, buying in on him. I've made readjustments have, to him. Where did you have him this week? You didn't have him in the top uh, 200, did he you? Two, he was 212 and 54. What's 54? And I'd say likely by Sunday he'll be in the 190 range. 54 among outfielders. Oh, Remembering okay. that, that that's multi-qualifiers, too, ahead of him. Sure, sure. I, I'll have him higher. I'm buying. I think he's doing Where would you have chance. him? <sighs> probably be around in my 30s in outfield. See, it, you know what? I'll, I'll I'll give it away. Most of what I'm going to write about, I've already kind of thought about the names, are names that I've I've bought into that we may not have been doing in March that I just rank higher, like Frazier and Dozier, and basically I've seen enough out of JD Martinez in three weeks to think that it's all legit, mm-hmm. and I don't care what his his resume tells me. It doesn't matter anymore where? to me. He changed. So I'd love to hear where you have Frazier. Where do you have Frazier? Top twenty? No, but close. But close. I see where you had him. You have him in a good spot now. But I mean, Frazier to me is more valuable than David Wright. Uh, you know, he, he moves up. I mean, yeah, a lot I'm, of I'm a, with a, you on that. A number of the of the guys that I'm going to write about are just guys that I bought into faster and don't care about their resumes. That's all it is. So, uh, Brantley was one. Brantley is a very good example of that. Frazier on I think the we're, list. We're both on yeah. the same page now. Frazier, we're kind of close. Um, I don't have the whole list in front of me, but everybody will have to read it Monday. Um, all right, by the way, the I'm 10th looking annual forward to it. SB Day, I don't know about that. SB Day auction and sweepstakes with 260 items and experiences available. There's something for everyone. You're not going to have any time to read anybody else's work. You're going to be so busy next week. And same with me, you know, being in Minnesota. Just go to ESPRadio.com for a link to the eBay auction. The SB Day sweepstakes features a Super Bowl 49 trip of a lifetime, and you can enter with a $20 donation. One of the items you can bid on for the SB Day auction is participating in a fantasy football draft at Watkins Glen Speedway with Dale Earnhardt Jr., other NASCAR drivers, and our own Matthew Berry. ESP- SB Day benefiting the V Foundation for Cancer Research, where 100% of straight donations and net proceeds goes to cancer research and related programs. Check it out now at ESPNRadio.com. What a great cause. ESPN Radio. With the action on the court, the diamond, or the gridiron. Comes alive. The NBA. The San Antonio Spurs are the world champions. Major League Baseball. The Boston Red Sox have won the World Series. The new college football playoff. The Seminoles have completed the perfect season. You're home for the best in sports play-by-play. ESPN Radio. Now it's time to let Tristan sing. <clears throat> la, 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 daily notes. You know, I do have to trade Jake Malinsky because he's the only hitter on my team, minus Will Middlebrooks, that doesn't have a steal. I'll give you Tanaka for him. <laughs> mm, gonna pass. <laughs> Palmer. ES- ESPN Radio, ESPNRadio.com, and ESPN Radio's mobile app will have games on Saturday starting at 6 p.m. Eastern. It's Nationals Phillies, and Sunday Night Baseball starts at 7 p.m. Eastern, featuring the Yankees and the Orioles. We do not know yet who the starting pitcher for the Yankees is. Do you know who it is? Is it Whitley? I think, yeah, that's probably going to be Whitley because Shane, uh, Shane Green is throwing the Saturday game, and that would be the last guy they have who I think would be eligible and rest for it. Shoot, I should go pick up a home run hitter against undecided. You just, you, you've seen the Yankee rotation now without Tanaka in it. I know, and I know you're negative yeah. on it, and it's hard to be positive. Um, what? Give me your 30-second your take here on what teams tend to do 
the final weekend before the All-Star break. Uh, sometimes it affects pitchers' usage. Sometimes it means that a Jared Weaver gets a save opportunity. We've seen that in the past. Roy Oswald had one a couple years ago, if I remember. Sometimes it means that players like Alex Gordon just won't even play because they're hurting and they want to get them in the All-Star game, which is ridiculous. But what's your take on what happens that final weekend before the All-Star break? Yeah, I'd say that the, that the rotations are most likely to change here. The only time it's more likely is when teams are lining up for the playoffs in the final week of September. But you will see occasionally guys get skipped, guys get pushed back. Felix Hernandez being one example already moved back. The other one is that you just mentioned Roy Oswald with the save opportunity. Some guys who are starting pitchers who pitched maybe Wednesday do their throw day in a game on Sunday. So you might get a couple of bonus innings from your ace pitchers. Keep an eye on that. Uh I would not say that you're going to go and bank on saves for these pitchers. It used to be a lot more frequent that a decade ago guys would do this. I don't think it's as, as frequent nowadays, but you know, you might get a couple bonus frames. And you also might see a starting pitcher left in for, for more pitches, considering there's no games until the following Friday. And you might even see a guy go back-to-back starts. Right? I mean, somebody could start Sunday and, in theory, could start again on Friday or Saturday next week. I don't so, think we've, we've... We've never really seen that, have we? I don't think. I think if you're, like... You could see it. I mean, I don't know why you wouldn't. I mean, I'd say Tom Wilhelmson will probably make another appearance over the weekend because he had that abbreviated outing yesterday. That's an example, but you're not going to use him in fantasy. I don't think that's especially likely. We're probably going to see more Taiwan Walkers, guys demoted and people panic for no reason. The other one is Sunday. I bet you a lot of hitters are going to be benched. Remember we talked that theory, Eric? You brought it up that Sunday during day games a lot of these guys will sit. I wouldn't be surprised if a guy sits and gets a nice five-day rest. I'll say this for those in, in uh, daily head-to-head leagues. Don't wait until Sunday to tr- make your move because some of your hitters may not play and pitching usage will be different. So if you really need like a couple stolen bases, start doing it Friday and Saturday. Pick up Sam Fold. You know what I mean? Do that. All right, let's go through the day-by-day here on some of the pitchers. Not too much. Uh, anybody on Friday that you like that's well available? Uh, yeah, Zach Wheeler, love against the Marlins. That is the tailor-made matchup for him. So the Mr. Inconsistency, if you want to trust one time to use him, that's it. But the big pickup, I'm going Danny Duffy against the Tigers. I am. I'd go Joe, Joe Kelly against Milwaukee, even in their place. They didn't score much against the Phillies this week. And Joe Kelly, obviously his ERA is going to go way off from where it is now. But if he has an ERA of 320 the rest of the year, that wouldn't shock me. He always he seems to be able to pitch pitch. With runners on base, his whip might not be so low. Maybe like a C.J. Wilson, he a whip of 135, but if he keeps his ear in the mid to threes, that's okay. So Joe Kelly, mm. and it's a slumping team, so that's something to watch there. Would you? Oh, well, no way. I would. I might bait you on another board bet then. <laughs> what is that? We haven't done a board bet in a while. Right. That's that's why I was throwing the Philly. We could have done the reverse Phillies Yankees. I take Phillies, you take Yankees. But here's another one: Cardinals staff ERA the remainder of the season. Okay. We could do an over-under on that. Well, see, you're more worried than I am about the loss of Molina affecting their team ERA. I mean, they well, can I think get it's a, a good idea to, to project the staff. We should project the staff ERA. I think to give people a sense of where we stand on it. Well, what's all right? Well, right now, St. Louis has a 3.32 ERA. You want to take 3.50 okay. above? Kind of want to go to 3.40, but 3.50. For the fun of it, I'll take okay. I'll take three fifty and above. All right, put it on the board. Put it um, on the board. I don't know how this it helps anybody in fantasy because if you have Wainwright, you're not going to sell, and if you have Lance Lynn, he's fine. And uh, what do you what do you? Well, we'll get to Shelby Miller a little bit. Later. I just worry a little bit about Kelly Miller and Carlos Martinez that they, that they're a little bit more likely to have stinkers here. I'm going to be a, uh, I'm going to tread a little bit more carefully. All right, all fair. By the way, Minnesota is uh, using their Chris Johnson at Colorado. Don't use them. <laughs> I mean, yeah. at course. I mean, it's one thing to use an established, reliable pitcher, but you're not you're not using uh, you're not using this guy. Right. Uh, so be very careful. Oh, some Archer against Felix Hernandez. Love that game today. That's one to watch. It's a great matchup. I, I kind of like. Look, it's smart. It's it's smart business. They could have started Felix the other day or yesterday. They lost the game, so maybe it's not so smart. But they want him. They they need to beat Oakland. You know, mm-hmm. beating Oakland is more important than beating Minnesota. So I see it both ways. Felix would have dominated Minnesota. He needs to dominate Oakland. You never sit him. Um, you want to do home runs each day? Who do you have for Friday? My pick for Friday is going the opposite direction of the Twins-Rockies. I'm taking Chris Colabello against Jorge De La Rosa. 
Okay. You, guys, you guys you uh, guys bullied me into picking a <laughs> a low-rated player. <laughs> I actually wrote down Brian Dozier, um, which is not a low-rated player, but fair enough. It's a good pick. It's a good pick. Um, I don't think Drew Stubbs also. Uh, Jay, who do you have for Friday? As Drupal Cabrera. Mm. Right, against uh, Hector Noezzi. Saturday, uh, wow, some good matchups here as well. Strasburg Hamels, yep. that should be fun. I, I love this day for streaming. I won't get to see it, though, because I will actually be in Milwaukee to watch Jimmy Nelson pitch against Wainwright, which should be a blast. Would you use Jimmy Nelson here? You're going to you're gonna head over to Milwaukee? Oh, man, I'm jealous. <laughs> Tell me how that ballpark is. <laughs> what, uh, uh, would, you, would you use Nelson? He has started before. It's not his major league debut. And earlier this season he started, and didn't he walk like six or something? But the Cardinals aren't hitting. The Brewers aren't hitting. I mean, I I kind of would I add Jimmy Nelson in most formats. What's what's your 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 stake in investing in this guy? Stake. Yeah, it's decent enough that I'd play him here because the Cardinals are not performing well offensively, and it's a road game for them. Uh, five and two thirds shutout innings. It was three walks in that game at Miami. Six Ks. I, I certainly think the upside is high enough here. Wins are tough. It's Wainwright. Why did I think he walked six? Oh, I was looking. Some sites have walks before strikeouts, and some have it after. Yeah, that's what yeah. I'm looking at. All right. You know, hey, I got confused. It happens. Uh, yeah. I think Jimmy Nelson is a is a not a, I don't want to say a must pick up in 10-team leagues, but I I can't find too many better strand, uh, streaming options. I mean, I would still use Tom Kohler. I know his numbers home road are not even close, but, you know. Dominates at, the Mets. At the Mets. Uh, I'd use Dice Gate, too. I'd rather use Kohler. I'd rather use Nelson. Yeah. Yep. Um Anybody Wade Miley. Saturday? Wade yeah. Miley's a big one. I did the Drew Hutchison video. I uh, went in, in detail about what's good about that matchup. Uh, and there was a third guy. Oh, it's Charlie Morton's not a bad guy to use against Cincinnati. Morton and Leak in that game are actually very good. There's another one who I really liked in this day, and I can't find him. Would Maybe you use Jesse Chavez the at Seattle? No, it's a good place yes. to use a guy. He scares yes. me. Yes. Okay. Paul Mahalam against San Diego seems like a pretty good uh, bet <laughs> against the Padres. Yeah, yeah. They don't hit Look, lefties. Don't, don't you use everybody against the Padres? Pretty much. Okay. Pretty much. All right. Yeah, they must um, have changed the other guy. I don't know. I don't forget who it was. By the way, you know, there's a Tim Lincecum fans still love this guy, but just remember... Three starts ago, he had a 490 ERA. He's facing Arizona. This is the first non-Padre team, basically, that he's faced. I mean, he had another outing in there, too, where he pitched well. It was St. Louis. So, I mean, you, what, what do you think Linscombe's final ERA will be? Because he's lowered it like a full run in three outings. Two against the Padres, one against the Cardinals. This is a good guy to talk about because everybody knows his name, and he's literally lowered his ERA almost a full run, 490 to 391, just in these three outings. I, I don't think, think he's, he's going to. Yeah, I, I think his ERA ends up over four for sure. Oh, so do I. I think it would probably be about four fifteen. Um, I will note that I don't like this matchup at all. The Diamondbacks have owned him. Go back past seasons. The ERA. I can't do the numbers quickly enough in my head, but we're looking at 716, 409, and 844 in the starts he made in 2012, 13, and 14. Uh, and Paul Goldschmidt positively owns him. Goldschmidt would be the automatic homer pick for Friday, if you wanted to take an obvious guy. Okay, that's good. Uh, who do you have homering on Saturday? On Saturday, I say Cole Calhoun's missing home run happens. He just gets it two days too late. I was going to pick Matt Adams, but now I don't want to because I, I want to see Jimmy Nelson pitch well. I'll take Springer against Peavy. This will be Peavy's last outing for Boston, I predict. What, uh, and if you, I don't know if you, he'll be more valuable in NL only. I bet Peavy's a Cardinal by, by like Tuesday. I think they're going to need to pick up some help. Jay, you have a home run guy for Saturday? He'll always be Mike Stanton to me. Wow. Okay, then. Billy Joel. Uh, that didn't flow as well as Rubby. No, it no, didn't. No, it didn't flow it didn't. at all. It tried. It was a valiant effort. Thank you. <laughs> my, my ears hurt. Sunday, uh, the last day before the break. Any pitchers here you like? On Sunday, <laughs> Jake DeGrom against Miami in a home game. Much better K potential than I thought. Miami not an especially good offense overall in the past month or so, and especially not in road games. I don't think he's going to be on my list of players I like more than you, because I'm basically it's all hitters. But Jake Odorizzi, I mean, with that K rate, it's a pretty legit guy. 
pretty yeah. available. He was my me. video actually for for that day. Okay. Yeah, I mean, I I I, I thought I'm you would you. have him ranked a little bit better at this point. But again, it's not easy to do ranks. There's a lot of things that go into it, and as soon as you, f- you publish the ranks, there's a- always something you, you realize. Like whenever I did ranks, especially for football, I would look and I would see, oh my God, there's you know, here's somebody that I like that just changed the next day, or I forgot about that stat, mm-hmm. or whatever it is. Mm-hmm. Um, I will tell you one on Odorizzi if you'd like. Yeah, what do you got? Hmm, what's the time for it, Pod? <laughs> the geeky stat of the day. Holy freak out! All right, here we go. He struggles subsequent times through the lineups after the first one. The first time through the order, a 523 OPS. Second time through the lineup, 867. And the third time, an 850. That's Oda Rizzi? That's Oda Rizzi. Oda Rizzi's got great stuff. Once he works through pitching deeper in games, the Clayton Kershaw problem from earlier in his career, he could really thrive. And that's a guy who um, you don't you don't want to see him in a bullpen because when you see numbers like that, like Henry Mejia, they just make him a you know relief pitcher, and you know Oda Rizzi's so much more valuable. I, Tampa Bay's smart enough; they're, they're not going to take him out of the rotation. I think he's going to get there. I think he's going to make that adjustment. I think it's going to take some time. Is all. I hope so. I hope so. Would you use Trevor Bauer? Bauer fans. Yeah, I looked at him. Um, well, since we heard the heard the ticker there, yeah, sure. <laughs> it is the White Sox, though. Jose Abreu. Yeah, Abreu's probably taking him yard. Probably already has. No one else might. Gillespie. How about Gillespie this week on Sunday? Has two homers this week. He has three for the year. He has two this week. <laughs> Gillespie on Sunday. Uh, who it's you got? a possibility. Is that your homer possible. guy? I don't. Yeah, I'm going to take a, a, a more established guy too. But um, Gillespie has been hitting for power of late, and you know. <sighs> This could be like a Matt Adams situation, though he doesn't have that natural power. But Glassby, for a couple months, wasn't driving the ball, wasn't hitting for power. Maybe mm-hmm. they said to him, you need to hit for power to be our starting third baseman, and he's got two homers in his last two starts. So that does happen. You know, and I think maybe with Matt Adams, the same thing happened. The Cardinals said, look, we're not going to play you anymore unless you're starting for power. And then he started hitting for power. I think it really is that simple sometimes. They make it a little well, slight only- tweak. So, you know. There's only one solution here. You need to take a little road trip over to Cleveland after Milwaukee and ask Gillespie whether that's well, true. Well, I've, I've been there. I'm trying to see ballparks I haven't seen. And two years ago, yeah. on, a, on a week off, I drove out to Cleveland and Pittsburgh from the mm-hmm. uh, eastern Pennsylvania side. And uh, the, what uh, awesome ballparks. It rained that night in Cleveland, mm-hmm. but Pittsburgh. I love Pittsburgh ballpark. So, yeah, yeah. I'll, I'll be in Milwaukee briefly and then Minnesota. I'll see the overall park as well. Um, anybody with other home run guys for Sunday before we uh, get to a couple tweets? My Sunday one is, and to be clear here, it is Corey Dickerson. Not Chris Dickerson since we were just talking Indians. It is Corey in the Colorado game against Mr. Flyball Phil Hughes. Well, he's not Mr. Flyball anymore. I mean, his home run rate's much better this season. But okay, that's that's a fair assessment. Flyball rate isn't isn't fair isn't uh, isn't the same as home run rate though. No, no, it's not the same. Fair enough. Um, okay, JD Martinez is going deep. How about that? That'll be my last home run guy of the weekend, JD Martinez. <laughs> okay, didn't work out for me yesterday. I am no. uh, I am going to go with a guy you picked for Friday, Eric, with Brian Dozer on yep. Sunday. He's not going to win the home run derby, but it's going to be a lot of fun to watch him there and Morneau there. And I, I know the, the great Minnesota fans are going to reward their their guys. It's going to be. I'm glad Morneau's in that. You know, he didn't win the final. Brian vote Dozier over. just yeah. he just won the home run derby. <laughs> you All just right. handed it to him. I think. Well, you know, I mean, come on. I mean, look at look at the talent in there. I mean, look, he's talented, but he's not a natural home run guy. And, and it was all right-handed hitters until Morneau, right? He's the only one who's going to hit from the left side. Watch him win it. All right, now a couple tweets. Mailbag. Mailbag! All right, here we go. <clears throat> Fantasy Focus at ESPNRadio.com. Uh, if you need anything else, let me know. Fantasy Focus at ESPNRadio.com. Brr. All right, so hashtag the 06010, or if you really like, the 44, and we're going to do some uh, tweets. And I think we can do that on Monday again, guys, right? I mean, we get good tweets. 
the, all next week, maybe. We should do it all next well, week. There is all. There is no all next. Well, there's right. if, if, for people wondering, we're going to do a show on Monday, and uh, that'll wrap the weekend and talk about the Sunday games and uh, mm-hmm. and maybe a little bit about the All Star festivities. And I'll talk from Minnesota. And then Thursday and Friday, we'll have some special guests to talk about some prospects and injuries and get you ready for the second half of the season and go a little bit more in depth with preview stuff there. So let's get to some tweets now and see what people are talking about. Uh, I'm going through here. Okay, Jordan Wilson. Is it time to drop Shelby Miller? Free agents available are Zach Wheeler, uh, Henderson Alvarez. Wow, Matt Cain, Dan Heron, Phil Hughes, uh, Chris Young, and Dylan G. I think I'd rather have all of them than Shelby Miller, wouldn't you? Yep, and my rankings would reflect that, I'm fairly sure. Maybe one of those, since we just breezed through them, could be ranked a couple spots below him, but I think... Almost all, if not all of them, were ahead of him. And you said Zach Wheeler is the first name. Yep, sold. Second guy, yep, sold. I... <laughs> uh, next is Christian. Would you trade Alex Rios for Nolan Arenado? Interesting. Rios is not hitting for power. He's not, but the contributions in terms of stolen bases, which means the five-category contributions are a little bit more stable for me than Nolan Arenado. So I fear whether there's going to be a bit of a home road split for him in the second half. Rios with four home runs, but he is batting 300. He is scoring runs, and he is stealing bases. Arenado was so good before the injury, and he hasn't done much since. But I, I think he's going to be fine. Um, but Rios yeah. for him? That's a lot. It's. I think we rank Rios a little bit too well. If Rios ends up with eight home runs, Tristan, he's not a top 20 outfielder. Unless he steals 40 bases, which he's not going to do. Right, if he ends up with eight home runs. But I think he has more potential than that. I think he does, too. But I think, I think you're... You're ranking him based on past season, and he's had erratic, you know, he's been inconsistent from season to season in, in the past. So I, I don't know yeah, why he, he would all of a sudden hit for power if he hasn't done it for three months. Um, Steven, how would you rank Volquez, Worley, and Locke uh, the rest of the season in a 20-team 5x5 five five roto? So we're talking Pirates pitchers here. Volquez, Worley, and Locke. i, I got to admit, I didn't expect Volquez to be this good. One home run and seven starts. One run, three runs allowed in his last four outings total. I think you have to put him first here. Which one first? Volquez. How can't you? The way he's pitching. How can you predict his outings? I tweeted out last night that that's the ultimate Costanza for me. I I own him in Tout Wars, and when he's active for me, the ERA was like 470, and the ERA when I've had him on my bench was under two. We're talking about like 12 and seven starts in those two groups. How, so how bite the bullet, it? Tristan. Keep him on the bench for everybody else. <laughs> it, no, it's true. Whatever I say about Volquez, just do the exact opposite, and I just don't buy in, which means he's going to be like Cy Young in the second half. I, I, I think you're late to the party on this. I think he's doing well enough. Whatever how, he's changed. How, how am I late to the party? Two weeks ago, I endorsed him against the Reds. He got obliterated, and I took a lot of heat for that one. And that's that's okay though. That's going to happen with your with your picks, but that serves as a reminder what you are setting yourself up for. Oh yeah, there's 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 danger here. I mean, it was more than two weeks ago. His his outing where he got pounded was June 18th. Since then, four starts, three runs, one home run. So and the his the long term history says that those eight runs in two innings are a lot more likely to happen than the past three weeks. I agree with that. But I also don't buy Jeff Locke. I mean, I'd rather have Worley than Locke. But, I mean, winning fantasy teams generally don't have any of these guys. Let's make that clear, too. Right? I mean, these are not guys. They probably are, don't. They probably don't. Worley, Worley, I think, is an intriguing guy, though. I think the downside is a little bit less damaging than Volquez's is. I just don't trust that you can pick the right outings for Volquez. Okay. Garrett, should I shit Ioannis to Cespedes against King Felix? I personally don't sit any star hitters, no matter who the pitcher is. Would you? I guess it depends on what your other options are, right? Right. I think that's what it comes down to. It. I mean, do you have another guy who's comparably valued who's facing a lesser pitcher? Uh, Cespedes, just to give you the career history, 200 batting average, 233 slugging, no homers, 10 strikeouts, no walks, uh, 30 at-bats against Felix. Tyler, would you trade Animal Sanchez for Cliff Lee? <laughs> There's going to be a, an interesting statement made about Cliff Lee and his ranking in the second half on Monday. Uh, yeah, I would. There's your little yeah. tease. Yeah, I uh, I agree. I think it's I think I think Cliff Lee's going to be fine the rest of the way, and I don't I don't think he's going to be traded, but I don't think it matters. 
I mean, yes, he'd have more win potential on a better team. I get that. That's why I say Phillies win more than the Yanks in the second half. It's a guy named Cliff Lee. Hey, look, I I hope you're right, but sometimes when I tweet things like this out about the Phillies, and I was tweet, tweeting watching the yesterday's game, I couldn't believe they scored seven runs in the eighth inning. They're getting no hit by Matt Garza, and then they score seven runs. And Garza gets the loss. He didn't give up any runs while he was in the game. He left two on base. Of course they scored. But I don't want the Phillies to think that because they won four in a row that they shouldn't sell. They're still not a playoff team. That's my point. Okay, and now you might be getting to that point with the Yankees. The Red Sox look like they're selling, right? I mean, Peavy's next to go. They dump their catcher. Phillies have to sell. If the Yankees, uh, who could the Yankees actually trade that that has value here? You know, that's I mean, the so problem. They don't have. Don't, they don't have the prospects have for anything. price. By the well, way, no, I, I mean I, the I, other I, way. I mean, who are they selling? Like the Phillies can sell Cliff Lee and Marlon Byrd. Who do the Yankees have to sell that people want? <laughs> Each <or all. laughs> Uh, David Robertson has a contract that expires at the end of the year. They, that, you know what? If they were smart, year. they would sell their closer because they have it. They have a closer right away, already there. Not that that's why you mm-hmm. sell a closer. You always sell a closer when his value is high. You know, mm-hmm. but they've got a guy in Batances who could do it right now. He's an all star. He must be great. Okay, Since final thoughts time. <laughs> I'll right? give you a good final thought. Yes, a good anecdote for you why baseball is fun. I got the alert about the Garza no hitter in my car as I'm driving home, and I switched over down to the radio. And you know when I switched over? It was at the moment the first hit happened. <laughs> and then there were more. I just think it was, there was an unbelievable way to end that game. I mean, just all these runs. Just. It was hard to believe. All right, so I've got a busy weekend coming up, and you do too as well, and then lots of content from ESPN Fantasy coming next week at the All-Star break, so make sure you check out that. We'll have a show on Monday, not on Tuesday and Wednesday, then back on Thursday and Friday, so we'll, we'll, be, we'll, be, we'll be helping you out. Let's put it that way, right? Okay. Oh, yeah. All right, so that's it for our weekend. Please have a safe and healthy and happy and awesome weekend uh, for Jay. For Everything this is awesome. I'm Eric. I'll be tweeting about my experiences this weekend and early next week. And uh, let's have some fun. Talk to you next Prospects. The theme song for the Fantasy Focus was created and performed by Eric Hutchinson. Check out more of his music at erichutchinson.com. Thank you for listening to the Fantasy Focus. For more great podcasts, log on to the iTunes Music Store or Pod Center at ESPNRadio.com.